Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at section 21F.2, the last rule, which is called the quotient rule. Now, if we go ahead and take a look again at where we are, by finishing up the quotient rule, you are basically done with all the basic rules in order to calculate the derivative, calculate the derivative function for any particular situation that you're given uh, initially. So let's take a look at what the quotient rule says. It says that if you have y is equal to f of x over g of x, now assume, we're of course assuming that g, g of x is not equal to zero, otherwise this would be undefined. Then d of y over d of x, or y prime, is going to be the same thing as g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x, all over g of x quantity squared. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here's example number one. Okay, example number one says, let's say you have y is equal to, this is 3x squared plus 4, this is all divided by x to the fourth plus 1. Okay, <clears throat> so take a look at what we have again. We need to go ahead and determine what f of x is. And again, if we stay consistent with this, this is just going to be 3x squared plus 4. g of x, in this case, is going to be x to the fourth plus 1. So now we just need to go ahead and determine what we have for the derivative of both f of x and g of x. We know that this is just going to be equal to 6x. And g prime of x is just going to be equal to 4x to the third. Okay. So what we can do now is we can determine what d of y over d of x is, which is of course the same thing as y prime. That is going to be g of x, which we know is going to be x to the fourth plus one, times it by f prime of x, which we know is going to be equal to six x, minus f of x, which is going to be equal to three x squared plus four, times it by g prime of x, which is going to be equal to four x to the third, and this is all going to be divided by g of x quantity squared. So this is going to be x to the fourth plus one quantity squared. Okay, and there you go. That's how you would go ahead and use the quotient rule to determine what the derivative of this is. Okay, now of course you can go ahead and once again factor, simplify, hopefully something might cancel. And we want to go ahead and be able to do that later on. Uh, but for right now, let's just focus on making sure that we can get the right expression, all right? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second example, of course, which will be just slightly, well, the, the problem here is just going to change slightly. And all I'm going to do is this. Here's x to the fourth plus one. I'm going to say that this is the square root, okay? Now, how does that change things, that symbol change? Now notice that f of x, again, is still going to be the same thing as 3x squared plus 4. But notice now that g of x, now of course I want to show this with exponents. So that's the square root of x to the fourth plus 1. That's the same thing as x to the fourth plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. Okay, so if I take f prime of x, f prime of x is still going to be 6x. But notice when I get to g of x, again, I have to use the chain rule because I have a composition of two functions. So what that means then is that g prime of x is going to be equal to 1 half x to the fourth plus 1 to the negative 1 half times it by 4x to the third. Okay? So what I have now is just by following again my pattern here or my formula for y prime. y prime then is going to be equal to g of x which is going to be this x to the fourth plus 1 raised to the 1 half power times it by f prime of x, which is going to be equal to 6x, minus f of x, which is 3x squared plus 4, times it by g prime of x, which, let's go ahead and simplify that. That's just going to be, what is it? That's 2 times it by 2x to the third, x to the fourth plus 1 to the negative 1 half. And then I'm going to divide all of this by what I have is g of x, which is going to be x to the fourth plus one to the one half, raise that to the second power. Okay, so 
Let's go ahead and see if we can simplify this just a little bit. Uh, let's see here. And see if we can factor anything out. Uh, we have y prime is going to be equal to. Now, the one thing that we need to go ahead and consider here is take a look at what we have. We have uh, the two the two x uh, the two x cubed here. We have the six x here. So we can take out a two x for sure. Now we can also go ahead and take out an x to the fourth plus one. X. Oops, sorry. X to the fourth plus one. The question is though, is do I want to take out a half or do I want to take out a negative half? And when you think about factoring things out, you always have to factor out the least amount that you can. So in other words, if you have, say for example, x squared plus x to the third, you can only factor out x squared because that's the lesser of the two exponents. So in the same respect, if you compare one half to negative one half, you have to take out what's less. So that would be negative one half because negative one half is less than a half. Now, what does that mean then? Okay, well, let's take a look at the 2x first. The 2x, if we factor that out, we're left with a 3. And if I factor out x to the 4th plus 1 to the negative 1 half, how am I going to take that out if I have this? Well, what we really want to consider is, if I was to go ahead and multiply this to this, which I know has to be x to the 4th plus 1 as well, what do I multiply it by in order to come out with x to the 1 half? Now, by a rule of exponents, if I multiply this to this, then I add the exponents together. So if that's the case, and I want to have a result of 1 half, then that just has to be 1. Okay, and then minus. Now, if I go ahead and take a look at the 2x, I factored up the 2x. So the 2x, so I'm left with just an x squared. I'm also left with a 3x squared plus 4. 3x squared plus 4. Oops, sorry. Plus 4. And I've also gone ahead and factored out the x to the fourth plus one to the negative one half power. So I'm done. Okay, and then this is all going to be over. Well, of course, if I take an exponent and raise it to another exponent and multiply those two exponents together, I get x to the fourth plus one. Okay, now notice that I have the x to the fourth plus one here and the x to the fourth plus one here. So really what this looks like is 2x. And then this is going to be 3 times it by x to the 4th plus 1 minus x squared times it by 3x squared plus 4. And then this is all going to be divided by x to the 4th. Now, this means that this goes to the denominator and it's going to change from a negative exponent to a positive exponent. So that means that this is going to be x to the 4th plus 1 raised to 3 halves power. Okay, and there you go. That's what d of y over d of x is equal to. So there you go. Now we know the quotient rule. Okay, now we know how to do, now we know how to find the derivative function for any function that is given to us because we've taken care of all the operations on which can, which can act upon functions. Okay, so give it your best shot. Let's see how you do with the quotient rule. Alright, see you later. Bye-bye.